Welcome to Finding Jesus Today. I'm Jamison Stewart, and with me is my good friend, Drew Suttles. Uh, today we're going to be discussing and, and studying a section in Luke, Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through verse 25, where we will notice John's birth being announced to Zacharias and Elizabeth. Uh, his parents, who we'll notice, were really outcast of society. Uh, I hope that you will get your Bibles out and open them up with us, and I hope that you will hold us accountable to what the text says as we study God's Word together. The next passage we come to in our study of finding Jesus today, we, we come to Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through 25. In that section, uh, John's birth is announced by an angel sent from God to Zacharias, his father. Uh, the text tells us that Zachariah and Elizabeth, they were uh, both blameless. They were walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord. They were faithfully serving God. But Elizabeth, the text says, was barren. She, she couldn't have children. They were both older. They were both past the age of bearing children. And so God sends this angel to Zacharias and tells him that your prayer has been heard and you're going to have a child. Zacharias, though, doubts what God has told him. So until the child is born, God says, you are not going to be able to speak because you doubted the word of the Lord. You know, Drew, as we think about this section, and as we think about what's going on, and to those who are watching or listening, I encourage you when you have an opportunity to read this text and, and to think about the things we've talked about. You know, why, Drew, during that time, we think about Elizabeth being a, an outcast of society, uh, someone that society would have looked down on. Why yeah. would they have looked down on her? Well, simply because she couldn't have children. Now, the text tells us that she was barren. Um, and so when you couldn't have a child, people look down on you. Uh, and you could go to the Old Testament. Look at Sarah, for example. Uh, you can look at uh, Rachel. Remember Rachel and Leah? Uh, Leah was able to have children. Rachel wasn't. It was almost this, well, you're not as good, or, or I'm going to look down on you because you can't have children. But, you know, you, you make that parallel today. What about those young mothers? Yeah. They don't have the fathers. He's not in the picture. They're young, and they're considered outcasts, social outcasts. Well, you can relate then to Elizabeth and her situation. So in this day and time, she'd be looked down upon simply because she couldn't have children. Right. And, you know, we think about this book, you know, as we mentioned at the beginning, is really uh, the gospel to those who are outcast. A yeah. And, you know, you even think about, of course, we, we see that in that culture, Elizabeth would have been looked down on perhaps as an embarrassment to her family. Uh, yeah. Even Zacharias, all those years, uh, his wife could not have children. And you know that people would have had to have been asking him and say, Zacharias, what are you doing? Don't, don't yeah. you understand how important it is for you to have a child, to have an heir? Um, in that day and age, in that culture, that was vital to, to their family, to that society. And so while Zacharias may not have been looked down upon, people perhaps would have been doubting his judgment and staying with Elizabeth all these years, wondering, why don't you put her away and go get another wife? So yeah. what we see, the first individuals we are introduced to after Luke tells Theophilus he's writing this, is he introduces us to folks who would have been looked down on in their society. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth says then when, uh, when she finds out she's going to be having a child and she is going to be having a child, she says in verse 25, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. You think about then what it must have been like for her every day, uh, you know, Drew, you know, what would it be like to live your life or for anyone to live their life every single day feeling like they are an embarrassment 
to their family. It's like there, there's nothing that they could possibly do. There's no amount of good that they could do to change the narrative. You know, people today will hold someone's past against them, and no matter what they do to try to overcome it, there's still this stigma about them. There's still this, oh, well, you remember what so-and-so did back then. We, You know, they're still the same person. Elizabeth could not help this, but people didn't see it that way. You know, she was an outcast, but not a fault of her own. And so it must have been, you know, extremely embarrassing to to uh, to go out and to just be among the people knowing you have eyeballs on you the whole time and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and so when you think about that, it, it must have been hard for her, and those in society today may feel the same way. But the important thing to remember is that God still views you as important. God right. looks at you as important to him. And that's really all that matters. Right. And and as we think about further on in this text and thinking about what's significant about the angel coming and his interaction with Zacharias and, and telling him, God's heard your prayer, uh, you're, you're going to have a child. Yeah. Something that I think about and, and why that's so significant. First of all, uh, God knew that Zacharias had been praying for a child. Uh, sure. All You think about how many years that prayer must have been said and how wow. often that prayer must have been said. And then finally, yeah. God says, Zacharias, I've heard what you've been praying. Uh, yeah. it, just, it just stands to remind us God does not forget about us. No. He knows what we're going through. You know, as, right. as you looked at that, what, what stood out to you about that, that section there being significant? You know, I think also you mentioned verse 6. They were both righteous before God. And we have this promise in the New Testament, 1 Peter three twelve, that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. And so society may not listen to you. You may be outcast. You may feel like you don't have a voice. But with God, you do. God's listening. God hears those prayers, and like you said, He's not going to forget about you. And I think it's significant also to consider the source. Yeah. You know, the angel of God is the one who came and told Zechariah that. It wasn't like someone came off the street, hey, this is what's going to happen. He could have so much comfort and assurance knowing God has heard my prayer, and He's going to deliver. And so Zechariah was able to take him with us, but, you know, we're not going to have an angel come to us, but we do have the Word of God. Right. And we can have that same assurance, that same comfort that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, you know, in thinking, too, about that along those lines, God not leaving us, God not forsaking his people, is right. even if, you know, his people are considered, you know, worthless to society, you know, society cares nothing about them, it shows that God loves them. And God right. cares for those whose society may consider a shame or an embarrassment or someone that they don't want to have anything to do with. God cares yeah. for those people. He cares for his children, even right. though no one else may. Yeah, um, you look throughout Scripture in the Old and New Testament, it's almost as if God says, give me the poor, give me the oppressed. I'm going to take care of them. Pure and undefiled religion it's to visit the fatherless and widows. That's what brings honor to God. And so, yeah, that's a wonderful blessing that we have is to know that God is there for us. He wants us to come to Him because of what He can provide for us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, as we're thinking about this section and thinking about what's happened in Luke chapter 1 and verse 5 through 25, Drew, why does this section matter to us? Uh, w what is it here that we can take, lessons maybe we can learn, and and apply to our own lives. Yeah, this promise that was given to Zacharias was, of course, important to him and Elizabeth, but more so in the whole scheme of redemption. Go back to Abraham and Isaac. God promised Abraham a son. He delivered. God promised Zacharias a son. He delivered. God promised the world a Savior, and he delivered. He sent forth the Son of God, his only begotten Son, in Jesus. But what's significant is that John the Baptist was the one, John the Immerser, He's the one who would prepare the way for the Lord. That was prophesied in the Old Testament, and we can know when we come to the New, everything that God has been telling his people is coming to pass. And so John is one who was going to prepare this way. He was going to take the focus off of him and put it to Jesus. And that's very, very important for us today. Yeah, uh, you know, when you think about 
uh, as, as this child, uh, John, as Zacharias names him at the end of this chapter. He was going to be born. He was going to make people ready for the Lord, the scriptures say. You know, that's someone then, as we study through this book, uh, we're going to need to pay very special attention to yeah. this child as he grows and the things that he teaches and, and who he points us to. Because yes. this, is, this is where Luke begins. And he starts off by centering our attention on Zachariah and Elizabeth and the child born to them. You know, you talked about something, and as we think about, you know, finding Jesus today, and we think about how that so many uh, in the religious world, in the denominational world today, so many so-called churches today, is it about pointing people to Jesus, or is it about something else? You know, sadly, for the most part, it's about looking to men, looking to the traditions of men. But if you look at John the Baptist, think about what he could have said. He could have been filled with pride. I'm the cousin of Jesus. I'm six months older. I'm the one prophesied in the Old Testament. But that's not what he did. You know, John 3 and verse 30, he must increase, I must decrease. And, and Jesus said of those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. I mean, what a statement by Jesus and so John could have taken that and said, look at me, but he didn't. He took that focus and directed it to Jesus, and we must do the same exact thing. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes we forget uh, that when John grew up and he was teaching, there were huge crowds that came to him and that heard yeah. him and that listened to him. He drew the attention of Pretty much everyone, you know the, yeah. you know the common people, the the rulers of the people. He even, you know, maybe the kings and the governors. He got everyone's attention, but yet, Good. so many today, with that kind of attention placed on them, instead of pointing people to the Lord and pointing people to God's word and what God has said in His word, they like to gather a following behind themselves yeah. and right. grow their own popularity and what they want to do and what they think and what, you know, the, the money they want to get from that. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. And so in thinking about that, I think we, we need to make note of this child is going to grow up and we need to pay attention to what he's going to do, to who he is going to be. Yes. Uh, and Drew, in the last couple minutes we have here, uh, something else that stood out to me is something we've already mentioned a little bit, but I want us to think about it again. Yeah. This, these passages here show us that the Lord does not forget His people, even That's if right. they are outcasts of society. And you know, you want to you think about people who are searching for the truth. They're they're looking for what is right. They're looking for the Lord. What this shows us is that if you are a child of God, even though you may seem meaningless to society, you matter very much to the Lord. You matter right. very much to God. Drew, as you think about what God's people mean to Him, uh, is there anything that, that comes to your mind as you think about just how valuable His people are to Him? You know, from the moment sin entered the world, we can see how God cares for people. Genesis 3.15, that first proclamation about Jesus, the seed of woman is going to come. That promise made to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, the promise that the scepter will not pass until Shiloh come, Genesis 49. You trace through the Old Testament. You look at God's people. Look at the book of Exodus. They're under all this oppression. God didn't forget them. He sent Moses. They were able to go through. He promised them a promised land. He delivered on that. You look years later to the captivity, 70 years in captivity, God did not forget them. And so those who are taken captive by sin, God has not forgotten you. He has sent the perfect sacrifice, Jesus, his death. That's all it took was one time. It was all sufficient. And so if you're in Christ, nothing else matters. Your social status is, not, is nowhere near your status with God because that's much, much more important. And so when this life is over, all that's going to matter is how do I look in the eyes of God, not how do I look to others in society. 
That's right. And, and as we close today in our search to find Jesus today, know that you matter to him. Amen. Amen.